Deep in Israel's Aravah Desert, there is an oasis of hope. Here, students from across the Middle East and around the world are being provided with the knowledge and skills they need to protect the environment they share. Everybody needs resources, everybody needs water, everybody needs air, it doesn't matter where you're from. Israelis and Arabs, Jews, Muslims and Christians, future leaders united by the belief that nature knows no borders and the conviction that true coexistence begins with meaningful collaboration. It's taught me to believe. That's the language that we teach. It's the language of trust. We focus on environmental issues from a transboundary perspective um, that um, is based on cooperation with our neighbors. You look at environmental problems in Israel, they are not, for the most part, contained within the borders of Israel. What we do on the, in terms of the environment here will affect what's happening in the West Bank, will affect what's happening in Jordan and vice versa. So if you really want to understand environmental problems, and if you really want to come to um, dressing in a comprehensive and a sustainable way the solutions. The only way to really do it is on a regional cooperative basis. And that's really what we do. That's our expertise. That's our contribution to addressing environmental issues uh, in the Middle East. The Arva Institute is an academic uh, research institution under the auspices of Ben Gurion University. Jews and Arabs in the same room, Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians, and students from all over the world for a semester, two semesters, sometimes for longer. There may be a difference of opinion about history or about politics or about why the conflict started in the first place. They all have to learn to live together as angry as they may be about each other. It's not if the Israelis win, the Palestinians lose, and if the Palestinians win, the Israelis lose. It's if one side loses, both sides lose. After spending a year here, they're gonna see the Middle East as their home, not just Israel, Palestine, or Jordan. Our alumni are making a critical difference to the dialogue uh, between peoples in the region about environmental issues, about natural resources, and how we need to work together uh, in order to make this place a better place to live in. I think that we prove it here at the RFI Institute every day that we can change people's attitudes, that we can change people's minds, and that we can open up people's hearts to each other. At the end of the semester, where do you go? You leave this bubble, but you don't leave it as you came. You leave it with all those things, you, with all those information, all those feelings that you learned, all those principles that you learned at the Arba. Where do you take it? You take it back to your society. I take it back to Jordan. People take it back to Palestine. People take it back to Israel, North America. So we are the generation that can make a change. One of the things the RFI Institute has wanted to do was to educate a new generation of leaders who would realize that nature has no borders. We need leaders who believe that there's a future for all of us in the Middle East. And if there's a future for all of us in the Middle East, then we need to start doing something today so that future is bright and clean and healthy and peaceful. This place does attract people who have leadership qualities. And I've met a lot of people with a lot of leadership qualities, people who have ideas bubbling in their brains. It puts faith in you. It says, if you have an idea, tell us, maybe we'll do it. What's the best way to have that kind of impact? Invest in our future, invest in our students, invest in the young generation. This is a non-for-credit uh, program that students are required to attend, and it's where we talk about the things they don't want to talk about. Before I came here, discussing the conflict was really hard for me, because I know there's only one side of the story, it's, uh, it's only my side. You have to learn, and it's very difficult, how to see from the other person's viewpoint and how to still be friends. We discuss one of the most controversial issues that I don't think anybody else outside can find it easy. We have Israeli students who are soldiers who serve at checkpoints and Arab students from Palestinian territories who try to come across those checkpoints. To have peace, 
We have to talk about history, and pain is pain. It's not always a pleasant session. Often students will run out of the room crying, will scream and yell at each other, will be so angry. It was the only place in the world during the war that you can see Palestinians and Israelis inside one room crying for the same reason and hugging each other. There won't be any solution for any environmental problem without discussing politics. It's not always easy, but it's one of the hardest and best things that comes out of the program. There is dialogue. And dialogue and compassionate listening is very important towards peace. And this is how I say that it's successful. What I see is students rising to the occasion, dealing with, with the complexity of this place in, in such a flexible and resilient and um, just uh, remarkable way. It's, it's, it's amazing to see the, the students succeed. We have to work and talk to each other to save the environment. And those bridges, those channels that we built to talk about the, to save the environment, also it adds to what? It adds to that we have the channels opened already to talk about peace, to talk about the hard issues that nobody else can talk about. The Institute work is not done with you when you leave this gate. We have something called the APEN that really connects all the alumni together. The Arava Alumni Peace and Environmental Network was born of the fact that the alumni were finding each other um, out in the field or through us and finding that these were the kinds of people that it was easiest to work with, to start projects, to get advice. Things like where would be a good place to study, what's a good program to study in. We have one alumni who is working at the Dead Sea and his boss said to him one day, you know, it would be so nice if we could work with the people on the other side. And he said, what's the problem? I'll call the Arava Institute. Through the lectures and the students, I'm sure we can get to the right people, and he did. People uh, that were once my students are now my uh, research partners. Um, whether it be uh, in Jordan, whether it be in Israel. One of my colleagues now is somebody who now works within the Israeli government on dealing with issues that face the Dead Sea. Where Roe is today is in part due to the experiences that he had as a student here at the Institute. We've had the pleasure and the honor to have given them some of the tools to make the next step. I consider myself now ready and skilled to go forward with the peace process. The first reaction of my mom when I told her I want to come and study in Israel, she, was, she freaked out. She was, are you crazy? You go to Israel, how can you deal with the enemy? This is something that we raised with. My experience with uh, Arabs or Muslims um, in the world was passing in the street in Jerusalem. And suddenly I found Mechon Arava, the Arava Institute, which was talking about environmental studies, um, where Israelis and Arabs study together and also do some peace work, which to me was just a blow. I was like, wow, my, my, actually my heart jumped and I felt it in my stomach and I was like, this is it. It is possible to make a change. It is possible to make a difference that we're not just stuck in this cycle of violence that we can never get out of. It's the only way that we can succeed and we can make, make a change. We are 20 years ahead of the, rest of, the, of the rest of the country and we're 20 years ahead of the rest of the region. I do not know if the kind of work that is going on in the Arava Institute is, can be done anywhere else. I feel filled with, with, with life and happiness when I see the students that way. If we want to make a good future for our future generation, we have all to work together. Today and every day, lives are being changed and the future is being rewritten at the Arava Institute. Find out more about our purpose, programs, and people at www.friendsofarava.org. Join us, because nature and hope know no borders.